Saturday, April 19th, 5.30 p.m., the beginning of the end in downtown Grand Forks. A fire that started in the basement of one building spreads to a second and a third, and then eventually to a tenth and eleventh. We literally had people hanging out the windows. The immediate concern wasn't to save buildings, but rather save lives. Rescue crews and boats went building to building, finding families trapped between the flames above and the floodwaters below. Mom's right here. Oh, it's okay. Thankfully, it was okay. No fire fatalities. Every life in danger saved. So we'll have all the frequencies covered. Okay. Let's get to work. Let's go do it. The impossible task of saving the buildings. That was a job just for pilots. It was a two-pronged attack. Airplanes zeroing in on the worst flames and then dousing them with the same chemicals used on forest fires. And this awkward looking machine, aptly named Goliath, led the helicopter assault on the inferno. We're going to go up with the big bird here and dump uh, 2,000 gallons of water at a drop. God, what a mess. For the pilots, it was a very dangerous mess. Dodging plumes of smoke while dousing the flames, and then having to dodge power lines while refilling their water buckets. You guys are getting footage of this, I take it. Yep. Would sure like a copy at the fire center. And helping choreograph this dangerous dance was WCCO TV pilot Dale Dobish and the high-tech thermal imaging camera attached to our helicopter. Everybody else could only see this smoldering rubble. But watch, the thermal camera reacts not to light, but to heat. The white spots show what's burning beneath the debris. There's a hot spot in that corner yet. With Dobish directing, the other pilots take aim on those hidden fires. Look at that head. Boy, he's putting them in there. You're making my job real easy, Dale. <laughs> Despite the heroic efforts, 11 buildings destroyed. But the loss is about more than just buildings. It is a loss of Grand Forks history, of Grand Forks heritage. This downtown is bruised, it is battered, but it is not beaten. Hard work from the inside and financial support from the outside can combine to create a Grand Forks still true to its past, but also prepared for the future. People are what make a community. And even though the buildings may be gone, a lot of them, the people will rebuild and our community will be better than it's ever been. In Grand Forks, I'm Jonathan Elias, Beyond the Flood.